Hey, welcome to the second video on pitching. There was one non-verbal communication thing that I forgot and it has to do with this clicker. You may have noticed these clickers, they become quite advanced and you can have lasers with them like this and like that and you can show stuff with them. Isn't that cool? No, it's not cool. Don't. I'll show you what happens when you use the laser. It goes like this. So, so you're talking about your presentation, how this amazing breakthrough that you have for your customers, and then look at my graph, and you, you go like this, and then you say, yeah, well, and then here you can see how great it is, and oh, by the way, and here, and you just completely disconnected from your audience, because you need to focus this thing, the laser, so you really have to look there. So here's the pro tip, don't use the laser. Don't, don't use it. Typically when you think you need a laser, there's something wrong with your slides. The only thing you should need is something like this. If, if this is not specific enough, it means your slides are too detailed. So, so if you think you need a laser, you actually need to improve your slides to make them less detailed. So people will get it. Okay? Don't use the laser. If I ever see anyone in Climate Launchpad using a laser, boy, you have to deal with me, just so you know. Next, how do you interact? Now, there's, there's a key thing to keep in mind. The trust of the audience in you is directly correlated to your understanding of the audience. I'm going to repeat that one. If there's only one thing that you, you sort of remember after all this video stuff. I hope this is it. The trust of the audience in you is directly correlated to your understanding of the audience. You need to know who's in the audience. You need to know what they care about. You need to know how they feel, what they are awake, lying awake uh, of at night. You really need to know who these people are. And the same goes for the jury. So pitching is much more about empathy, about understanding who's in the room, than it is about you sort of telling this wonderful message and everybody gets inspired or something. So, empathy. Now, how do you show that? One of the ways to show it is to sort of connect with people, right? You, and, and the most important in Climate Launchpad is because there's a jury, is actually the jury. So, let's assume you've been just announced on stage and, hmm, the jury is still sort of scribbling notes or they are discussing with each other. So what you then do is you simply turn to the jury, who will typically be there or maybe in front of you, but it's fine to stand like this, for instance, and you simply allow them to finish what they are doing. It might feel really awkward to sort of allow this silence, but it's actually a great opportunity for you to check if you're breathing, if you're breathing in your belly, if you can feel your feet, and you can, you can just wait and relax. There's, there's really nothing here that is an issue. And maybe the 200 people in the audience, but they understand what you're doing. You're connecting with the jury. They're thinking smart. Now, the other thing is how you connect with the audience. Um, let's assume this is a big room, like 100 to 200 people. You cannot look at everybody individually. That would be, well, that's just impossible. So what, what I do is that I try to find sort of people in the room. So I find one person on the left, one in the center, and one on the right, and then sort of find a person that I easily connect with in eye contact. So a sort of awake person that you feel comfortable with. And then you will sort of, during your presentation, you go like, you talk and then you, you sort of, you pass through them. And, and you, maybe even your, your, your hands used a little in that direction. So, and then the people around those, those three people will think, oh, he's actually looking at me too. And it makes them seem. They feel seen, and, and this is one of the most basic needs of people. We need to be seen, and it makes it easy for people to trust if they, if they feel that you have attention for them. So all of this is a really important skill to interact with the room and to convey that you sort of understand who's in the room. Crucial. So good luck with that. Another thing is, is to choose your worth, words not in the words of the expert, because you have become an expert at something. You should avoid jargon. Use the language of your customer. So don't talk about technology. Apple never talks about technology. Don't use software. It's never about software. 
Use what it does. Use how it helps people. So Apple will help me do stuff in my life, make easier. Well, you can do something in the life in the, of the companies, your customers, that makes them help solve a problem. So that's what you focus on, talk in their language. And then talk as active as possible, sort of this optimistic, yes, we can. So they don't say, I hope, or I plan, or I might. Say, no, I do, I will, we are, we, we, we have this. And then in the Q&A with the jury is also very important. You only have like three minutes. It's gone before you know it. So make sure you finish, you, you sort of use really short sentences when you answer. Give short answers. And then give them space for another question because then they get a much better sense of what it is you're doing. Don't get lost in detail. And practice this with people around you. Now, I don't know if you've seen the launch of the iPhone by Steve Jobs, 2007. I think it's... It's probably the best presentation ever of any product. So if you haven't seen it, go see it. And I know what you're thinking, like, yeah, well, Steve Jobs, he was so talented. He was the, the world's best presenter. And he just had this natural gift. Well, I'd like you to consider something else. Because look at that video, the one and a half hour of it. Everything is rehearsed. Nothing of that was spontaneous. That guy didn't wake up this morning thinking, well, what should I talk about? It's been practiced for days. So you're looking at theater. And when you pitch, you are in a theater. And just like Steve Jobs, you can do exactly what he did. You practice, practice, practice. As often as you need to completely get it. Eat, sleep, pitch, repeat. In front of the mirror, to your partner, to your co-founders, to your dog, I don't care practice. And when you do, you will get to the point, what we call sprezzatura. So if you've looked up the Steve Jobs video, then look up a Yo-Yo Ma video. Yo-Yo Ma is probably one of the best cello players on planet Earth. And, and look at what he does, because you're looking at someone and, you know, he's, he's going and it, it, it looks really easy, right? You're like, wow, it's, it looks so easy. I want to do it too. Think again. He spent months, months to get this one piece right. And then he spent another month in making it look easy. Now, why is that important? Why do you want to have sprezzatura? Well, by making it look easy, you show that you completely mastered this. You show to your investors, to your customers, to anyone, to your, to your co-workers, that you are so committed to this and you've got it. You totally got this. That's when people start trusting you. So, good luck on your way to Sprezzatura. If you have questions, send me an email. If you have sort of suggestions for other videos that we could make, let us know by email or via social media works fine too. There's a ton of other stuff in our video library that can help you build a wonderful startup that uh, helps solve climate change. And I wish you good luck with that. And maybe I see you around somewhere in time.